With Dark at an end, and yes, I'm still crying about it, I thought it would be fun to rank who had the worst fate. Why? Because I'm crazy. Now, I had a really tough time with these selections. Almost everyone on this show has a pretty shit life, but there is definitely someone who takes the cake as worst fate. But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe, and do check out my other two Dark videos. I did one on the complete Dark series timeline, as well as Season 3 Ending Explained. And you can find links to those in the description below. Also, if my rankings are different than yours, just know that you are wrong and I'm 100% correct. But be sure to leave a comment posting where you'd rank your favorites in the comments below. But onward to number 10. Katarina Nielsen. Not only does Katarina lose her son Mikkel in the very first episode of the series, she also has to contend with a cheating husband. For most of season one, she's completely depressed, staying in her home, and forgetting about how her other children are feeling. Then near the end of season one, her husband Ulrich goes missing as well. Katarina just can't seem to catch a break until about season three, when she actually manages to find Ulrich in the 80s and vows to break him out of the psych ward. She holds her mother at knife point in an attempt to get a key card to the ward, but ends up getting killed by her. Now, if you think that's bad, this is only number 10. Number 9, Claudia Tiedemann. Now, some of you may be shocked at this being so high up the list, and there's a reason for that which I'll get into. Claudia has her own fair share of shit, like accidentally killing her father, taking over a nuclear plant hiding barrels of toxic waste, getting killed by Noah, watching her daughter slowly die of cancer, and spending years in the post-apocalypse apocalypse trying to get the god particle to work. You may be asking yourself, how is she not lower on the list? And the reason I didn't put it there was that Claudia is the only person in the show who has some control over her destiny. Everyone else is a puppet to fate, but Claudia actually orchestrates the events that will actually lead to the knot being destroyed. She actually gets what she wants in the end, a world where her daughter can live without pain. That's why I put her higher up, even though some of the stuff that's happened to her may not technically be as bad as things that happen to characters lower on the list. Number 8. Peter Doppler. Peter is an interesting case because we don't get a lot of personal time with him, but he is a character who suffers from immense emotional pain, much of which is caused by the repression of his sexuality and how that affects him and his family. In season one, we learn he had an affair with a transsexual woman named Benny, and that he's basically staying with Charlotte just to keep the family together. He can't be who he really is because he believes it would jeopardize his family. Then there's also alternate world Peter, who is a priest, and there's this weird scene where Charlotte finds him with a young man in the church, and it's heavily intimated that he's having some sort of relationship with him. In the future, Peter believes he's lost his wife and daughter Francesca, and goes every day to the blast zone to see if he can find them. He's then stabbed to death after trying to save his daughter from being sexually assaulted. Number 7, Elizabeth Doppler. From father now to daughter, Elizabeth not only had to deal with the dysfunctionality of her family before the apocalypse, but no one is even talking about how she she lost her boyfriend, Yasin. Remember Yasin, that boy in season one who was captured by Helga? Like Peter, Elizabeth had to deal with the thought of her mother and sister being dead and is sexually assaulted by a vagrant, watches her father die at his hands before beating the assailant to death with a fire extinguisher. She'll later fall in love with Noah and have a child, Charlotte, who is stolen from her. She'll later find out that Charlotte was sent back in time and is her actual mother. Talk about fucked up. Number six, Bartosz Tiedemann. Bartosz was dealt a pretty shitty hand. Before the apocalypse, he finds out his girlfriend is actually in love with Jonas, and then when he's sent back in time at the end of season two, he spends decades in the late 1800s and early 1900s completely stuck. He also had to deal with the fact his mother, Regina, was dying of cancer. In the 1800s, he'll fall in love with Silja, who gives birth to Noah, and she will die a few years later giving birth to Agnes. Following Adam's orders, he spends much of his time digging out the passage with his son Noah, only to be killed by him after after losing faith in Adam's plan. Lots of family members killing family members in this show. Number five, Regina Tiedemann. Regina's life was so bad that Claudia spends three seasons going back and forth in time just to prevent it from being so shitty. As a child, Regina was a loner who was picked on by the other kids like Ulrich and Katarina. She even self-harmed. In the earlier seasons, we see her mother is extremely controlling of her, something Claudia later regrets and tries to change. As a child, she's also wrongfully accused 
accused by Ulrich and Katarina of being the one who went to the police and alleged that Katarina was sexually assaulted by Ulrich when in fact it was Hannah. Her hotel business is a failure. She doesn't know who her father is and in both timelines she dies a slow, painful death to breast cancer. Not to mention in one of them she's suffocated to death by Tronta who she believes may be her father. Her husband is also a criminal on the run from authorities taking up an alias and her last name to better protect himself. Number 4. Helga Doppler Do you like killing multiple children? Well, Helga is your man. Even though he thought these killings were for the greater good, you can see in the show how much it affects him. At one point he even tries to tell Noah that he can't do it anymore, and that's one of the things that made me put him higher up on the list. The show often questions what hell is. Is it a place where you go when you die, where there's endless pain and suffering, or is it here on Earth, living with the pain and suffering of your past misdeeds? I happen to think the latter. The amount of pain he has to live with is unbearable, and his older self eventually goes back in time in an attempt to kill him. As a child, Helga had an extremely overbearing mother who is so cold it left me with the sense she didn't love him, and to top it off, he's friendzoned his entire life by Claudia. He'll later almost die at the hands of Ulrich, who believes by killing him it will prevent his own son from going missing. But he survives and is left with the side of his face and ear being disfigured. He spends most of his adult life as a janitor at the nuclear plant and is later T-boned by his future self who has traveled back in time to stop him. He survives this and will later get dementia. Number 3. Ulrich Nielsen Ulrich is another example of someone living their own personal hell, which I would argue in some instances is a fate even worse than death. As a teen, he has to deal with the disappearance of his brother Mads and her mother going crazy as a result of it, not to mention how his father was cheating on her. He's even falsely accused of sexually assaulting Katarina, but those charges are later dropped. He also just has terrible taste in music. <laughs> As an adult, he cheats on his wife in both timelines, I'll add, and ends up attempting to murder Helga, a small child, believing it will save his son. He'll later end up arrested, and when Hannah comes to visit him after traveling to the 50s, he's betrayed by her and left to rot in the psych ward. Things get much worse for Ulrich in the 80s, 30 plus years after being arrested, mind you, when he finds out that his son is actually alive in that time. He plans an escape, does end up seeing him, but is later caught, only to be found by his wife a few months later. Katarina plans to get him out, but on the night of this escape, she doesn't show up. Ulrich doesn't know she's been killed, but will spend the rest of his days completely alone in a psych ward, never getting to see his family ever again, completely alone. Number 2. Hanno Tauber aka Noah It's the guy we love to hate in those earlier seasons, but I kind of warmed up to him in the later seasons knowing how much he was betrayed and manipulated by those around him. Beginning with young Noah, he he had a rough upbringing growing up in the early 1900s and watching his mother die giving birth. His manipulation by Adam started at a young age and is so entrenched in him that he does Adam's bidding of killing his own father, Bartosh. He'll later orchestrate the killings of multiple children, believing that these deaths are all for the greater purpose of fulfilling Adam's plan of paradise. Not only does Noah do all these terrible things, he later realizes he was being manipulated by Adam and is killed by his own sister. Noah also has to go through the hell of living in the post-apocalypse where he'll later have a child with Elizabeth only to have that child stolen. He'll end up killing Claudia, his great-grandmother, where he learns from the missing Triketra pages that his missing daughter is in fact Charlotte. So basically imagine you've done all these terrible things and you believe you're justifying in doing them, but you find out it's all a crock of shit and you've actually been a terrible person this whole time. Oh, and you lose your daughter. That's what Noah had to go through. And finally we have our number one, I think we all know who it's going to be, Jonas Conwald. When I was planning out this video, his name wasn't the one that automatically came to mind for having the worst fate, but when I started doing my research, he's just leaps and bounds beyond anyone else, and I'll explain. Starting with younger Jonas, he has to deal with the fact his father committed suicide. In season two, we learn that suicide was because of Jonas. Not in a bad way, but more in a, I need to kill myself so my son can follow his path to save the world kind of way. So Jonas feels a bit responsible for that. When Jonas comes back to school after the summer of his father's death, he finds out the girl he likes is dating his best friend. And in season two, he learns that he will eventually become the person he hates most, Adam. After 
surviving the apocalypse, he tries to kill himself, but he can't even do that. Fate will not allow him to kill himself as long as his older self is still alive. So Jonas ends up spending decades trapped in both the post-apocalyptic world and the 1800s. As he slowly morphs into Adam, his continued use of traveling through time leaves him horribly disfigured, and he adopts the philosophy that he must destroy the knot so that he and the others can go to paradise, a place where there is no pain or suffering. And he does terrible things in this quest, like ordering Noah to kill children, killing his own mother, as well as Marta, his one true love, who carries his child. In fact, he spends most of his time fighting the person he loves most, Eve, aka Marta. Like Noah, Adam will later find out he was being manipulated, but in this case by Claudia. All those terrible things he did only perpetuated the loop, they didn't destroy it. His years of planning were in vain, his senseless killings unjustified. For these reasons, Jonas is number one on my list. So that's it for my top 10 worst fates in dark. What are your rankings? Make sure to leave a comment below and like and subscribe while you're here. I also want to mention my two other dark videos, a season three ending explained, and my entire series timeline. You can also follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.